Tommy, gun to bush. Back to gun, you run. Raise your power, you won't take the black. Come on. Get up in the cart. Get the stuff out. And you. This will mean the drop for you, Barrett. It's been a long time, Tully. Get down. You'll be riding no more. There's provisions for the fairbacks. He can spare them. Leave it. He'll jack it on us. He won't split. Come out same ship. <coughs> Jason Furbeck's journal. I have cause to wonder of late to what extent a ticket of leave can be regarded as a blessing. Such tickets, granted by the government to well-behaved convicts, enable them for some years before their sentences expire to work for themselves. One slip, one misdemeanor, and the ticket, with the precarious liberty it brings, is snatched away. With what caution does the ticket of leave man tread his way? For to once savor liberty is to make a return to the walls and chains of prison life unthinkable. Through loss of tickets, men have taken to the bush, been driven by hunger to deprivations, to bush ranging, and almost inevitably to the gallows. October the 20th, 1832. Supplies due yesterday were late. A ticket of leave drover by name of Skelton came today without them, having been attacked on the way. Who stole the rations? I didn't know him, mister. Don't you lie to me. That's enough. See to the cart, Samuel. We'll have to get some more. My guess it's Barrett. What do you say? Maybe. You know damn well it is. Get the horses. Oh, I am a huge... You're like that woman Shep's taken in. Till your belly's swollen, you do as I tell you. A few bags of flour and some sugar, Luke. I won't have you hunting down a man for that. You think he'll stop there? We'll have to pray he reforms himself. Katie, is it Shepherd? That's likely. Well, you are sleeping in his hut. Mm. Yeah, well, the way it is with him, he couldn't tell the difference between a woman and one of his sheep. <laughs> well, that'll stop some of them. Well, if you'd only say who it is, I'm sure my father would make him marry you. Yeah, there. Yeah. Well, that'll do. I'm a line in. Tell you the truth, Missy. If I were to choose one of them, and this little boy over here turned out to be the spitting image of another, God, there'd be murder done for sure. Best wait and see. That's the safest.
I'll be going home soon, Tommy. Small gun, yeah. Not a big one like that. Big White King lives there. I'm coming with you tomorrow on the dray. I've got some things I want to buy. Yes, Mrs. Yours, is it? Yes, Mrs. I've got one. You could have it if you like. It's got pictures. I'll be going home soon. I know. You could have it as a present. There's now I want to take from this country. Now. Dear John, this is writ for me by Ralph Haggard to say I'm thinking of you and shall never cease to wait for you to come home again. Yes, John. I said I'd wait. If it was forever. Are you coming, John? Are you coming home? Miss Yarzy. Oh, that's all right. You're not like the others. Prisoners. I can't seem to think of you as one. I take no shame for it. Shame's on others. Them that sent us here. I work for Mr. Carrington. He's the squire. I was his cattleman. Four shilling a week he paid me. And just married. Weren't enough. Not with a child on the way. A man came out from Norwich. He was like a preacher. But he weren't no parson. He told us about... Men like us. And he got a land labor society to better their wages. Well, Mr. Carrington said, you go to that meeting, I'd lose my job and my cottage. And I wouldn't work again. He mocked me. But Dolly says, you go. It's starve or starve. The militia were there with muskets. And Mr. Carrington said I was the ringleader. Eight months it were getting here. Like beasts to the knacker's yard. Seven years, all but a month. Now I want to take from here. How old was Dolly? When I was took. Nineteen. Two years ago, I had a letter from her telling me about the baby. If we're a girl. Dolly worked for Mrs. Carrington as a maid. She won't change. But there's things to change. That's why I'm trying to learn the reading. out of cigars. These should be dry by now. Shall I get them, please, sir? See, that goes off today. Yes, sir. Look, look at it. It's you. No, I couldn't. Ah, <laughs> you are a mouse. Oh. I could. I'm a scarlet woman. Well, oh, Anna Louise. <laughs> Miss Jessie. Anna. They're muddly. Just come from London. Do you like the colour, Lieutenant? 
I think they might suit some ladies very well. <laughs> oh, oh we're just saying, weren't we, Jessie, that Scarlet suits some men, too? Anna Louise, we said no <laughs> such <laughs> thing. Be off with you. Now, well, let's see what there is. Oh, yes, the beer. We got the barrel in the end. Tommy. <laughs> Money, love. Shows your tin. Oh, just a touch. Die. No tin, no rum. Give it a kiss, Brando. She do anything. Kiss you, your poxies and your. Or is it? I'll give you war. I'll give you war. I'd sooner kiss the backside of oars. I was good enough for the lieutenant governor. It's the Prussian. What are you after? Come for a cattle. Oh. I've come for beer. The barrel ain't broached. I've come for a full barrel for Mr. Furback. Jack. For Mr. Furback, you will give him a barrel of your very best beer. None of your stripes. I go back. She will give you. Ain't seen you, Kelly. What's your name? Jack, missus. Have a drink, Jack? You're a convict, ain't you? I don't drink, missus. He's a gent. They call him Scollard. He nicked the crown jewels. That's not the only thing he's nicked, I'll be bound. If you'll just show me the barrel, missus. It's in the back. You won't shift it yourself. Come on, I'll show you. No, missus. Tommy! We don't have stinking blacks in here. Leave it be, lad. Yeah, that's what I said. Me, yeah, we'll get them out. If you'll just show me the barrel, missus. You would, would you? Missy, Missy! That kill him, Jack! Missy! Roger! Evans! Uh, uh. Get out! Get out! Get out! Leave him be! Leave him be! You're under arrest. Don't take him. In 1831, the governor, presently staying at Parramatta, could not see me and my petition for squatters' rights was heard by a junior with neither authority nor interest. We saw the Lieutenant Governor. He was so polite. Most, yes. But not, I take it, very helpful? No, I'm afraid not. We're outside government limits. There's nothing he can do about it. He went so far as to imply that I, I was a gentleman outlaw. There's talk of pushing limits further out. Uh, did he mention it? Oh. Uh, the long journey was not entirely wasted. On the way home, Robots acquainted me of poor Skelton's misfortune. Authority here is altogether too unbending. It forgets it governs people, measures right and wrong by arbitrary laws drawn I know not where, but without humanity. I have resolved to help him. We've got to speak to Miss Furbeck. Will you send for her? She'll speak for me. Work your fault. You'll be all right. Oh, the old triangle where Harry used to dangle. <laughs> Cheer up, Kelly. Court's on tomorrow. You'll be dead soon. I used to bring a new scourger up from Sydney. Smoke it off, they say. On the old triangle where Harry used to dangle. Da 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 da. <laughs> oh.
Go on. So the soldier comes in and gives a shout, Your Worship. Uh, the trooper, sir, happens. Yeah, that's him. Go on. Well, the big fella's carving a jack. He'd have his guts on the sailor. The soldier took the both of them. It wasn't his fault. That's how it was, Your Honor. I see. As you've heard, sir, that does bear out the account of the other accused. I can form my own conclusions, Lieutenant. You, madam, are a woman of evil repute. Yes, Your Worship. I consider that you, more than anyone, are responsible for this deplorable incident. If I had my way, your inn would be closed. But, uh, unfortunately... Let her go. Thank you, Your Honor. If your lordship's ever passing and needing a drop of the real stuff, just come and see Molly. Cheer up, boys. Cheer up. If you skip, my husband will pay your fines. <laughs> the accused will stand up one at a time. <laughs> William Crooks, you are found guilty of causing an affray. One pound or one month's hard labor. James Skilbeck. Your Honor, I ask to be heard as to the character of one of the accused, John Skelton. Be quiet, sir. You are interrupting the court. But you're passing sentence. The accused has a right to be heard. Were you a witness to the charge defense? No, sir, but I know the man well. Then be silent, sir, or I'll find you guilty of contempt. James Skilbeck. You are found guilty of causing an affray. One pound or one month's hard labor? Oh, I lost me lights before it started. Three pounds or three months. Do you wish to protest further? Robert Lugg, you are found guilty of causing an affray aggravated by the use of a weapon. You are a former prisoner with a bad character. In my opinion, the sentence I can put on you is insufficient. You will be remanded to Sydney where you can be dealt with appropriately. John Skelton. Yes. I have listened to the evidence on your behalf. I accept that you were set upon by the other three men. I find you not guilty of the charge. <laughs> Just a moment. This man appears to be a ticket to believe man. Well, that is so, sir. Then how does he come to be working outside the colony? He's a bullock driver. He takes supplies to sheep stations. But outside the colony, Lieutenant. Well, there are settlers there. Well, I'm quite aware of the squatters, sir, but we are talking about an area outside government jurisdiction. This man's ticket doesn't allow that. Oh, no, sir, but surely... But it's a serious offence. A ticket of leave, man, leaving the colony. Mr. Faulkner. Oh, be quiet, sir. I am talking. Uh, what was this man's original offence? Reasonable association, sir. Was it indeed? You know his type, don't we? The same rebellious scum we have to employ out here. Very well, the man will be returned to government custody and stand trial for breach of ticket of leave. Do you want this man to go to Sydney, sir? That's what I said. This is unjust. A man is known to all of us in the district. He's honest, hard-working. He was not to blame. Take him away. I have warned you before, sir. This is inhuman. I will be heard. Very well. The man is totally innocent, sir. He has committed no crime. He broke his ticket of leave. What is that? Just one month to serve a wife and child waiting for him back in England. Maybe he has time to reflect on them further for the few months the government will require. After seven years? Can you imagine what it means to him? We've argued before, sir. You may recall. I do very that, well. That I merely administer the laws and do not make them. I'll remind you, sir, that you are in no position to speak for anyone. You yourself are a lawmaker, occupying crown lands illegally. You dare say that? I do, sir. When you block every application I make. And I shall do, sir, so long as you squatters 
continue to offer refuge to criminals and deserters. And what makes them so? I've seen wretched prisoners driven to such desperation they'd rather starve in the bush. But they don't starve. That's the trouble. You feed them. You provide them with a refuge by your presence. But rest assured, we intend to put a stop to it. The days of the squatter are coming to an end. I see. He punish me through this man. I implore you, Mr. Faulkner. Not for my sake, but for John Skelton. I beg you and all... Well, take my advice, Mr. Furback. Go back to England. This is not your country. I pray God it may never be yours. Sir, uh, well, what is his name? Skelton. Jack uh, Skelton. I Skelton. <laughs> what a, what a, a different fellow of my life. <laughs> 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 Humiliated like this. That's well, regulations. I've decided to travel to Sydney with you. I shall speak for you at the trial. You're sending me back. What am I on my ticket? Well, things are different in Sydney, wouldn't you say, Robert? At worst, it'll be two or three months on your sentence, no more. And then you'll be off to see your wife and child. Who says they go back? We have a life. All of us. to Sydney. Champion. He's making for the river. It's going to be a long trail.
Thomas out. There's some blood on him. Perhaps the blacks got him. It'd be better if they did. They'll go for the mountains. You know Barrett's up there, do you? He's no friend of Barrett's. I haven't got enough men for I don't that. know what you do have enough men for, Lieutenant. Morgan, Luke, I told you not to hunt this man down. Don't tell me you didn't hear. They'll go after a frightened kid. But bush blackguards who are raiding our stores, oh no. It's Barrett's scalp I want. If Lieutenant Governor gives you a medal for Skelton, you keep it. Father? That man, the one he struck, is not dead. But Skelton will go to the island for it. Why, you see it's out of our hands. Father, what's happening? You said you were trying to help him. Never violence, Jessie, never violence. Samuel? Miss Jessie, I'm, I'm sorry. You know that if there was anything I could do, I'd do it. Luke. Don't help them. Please, Luke. Let him go. Do you see how far the metals? He wears his Christian principles like bunting, but also now I'm a Christian. And you should hear me. He's a good man. Oh, yes. But in a bad place. His meddling's made Magister of Faulkner an enemy. One slip and he'll have us off our land. I don't understand. A ticket of leave, ma'am. We employ. We don't lift a finger to bring him in. What do you think our friend will make of that? So you'd hunt him down? Yes. You mean you'd send him back to that place? If you were my own brother, I'll not risk losing our land, Jesse, not for anyone. Hear the book. You could have stopped them, Father. It's their land, as well as mine. Then I'm glad Mother died before she saw what it's turned them into. I hate it here. Why did we have to come? We're here by God's will. And Jack, father? Was it God's will that he was sent out here? Torn from his wife, hunted down, crucified? He broke the law. Does it say that in your book? Rendell unto Caesar. You? Jesse. Mother was ill, father. Everybody knew it, except you wouldn't allow her to be. I will not hear you talk about your mother. Mother rendered unto Caesar. With her life. How dare you speak to me like that. Miss. Begging your pardon, miss. It's, it's Katie. I'll come. You know nothing about it. Leave it to Shepard. I want to go, Father. I loved your mother. Most of my strength was her. She needed it all, Father. Could I have stopped him? He's too strong. Look.
beautiful. Real currency lad, Missy, wouldn't you say? Get some sleep. I'll come back in an hour or so. You've been very kind. Go and sleep. Better get some sleep. I'll not hurt you. Ah! I need help. I've got to get these off. A crowbar. Well, go after one. Chisel. Where have you been? I'm walking. I'll get you some food. Looking for you. You're the only one I knew to help me. Uh, uh, I will help you, Jack. I've got to tell my father. He'll tear me in. Stay. If they find me here, well, I can make it on my own. Hunting for you. I didn't know. They never let you home again. I thought once you served your sentence, you stayed it. You make it up now. Tim Boat's going to America. Nothing! Betty, where have you been? Oh, Katie, father. She had a little boy. Everything all right? Yes. What were you doing in the barn? It was open. I thought one of the animals might... Oh. No, it's all right now. It's all right. Well, slash the door. What's on your petticoat? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I wrapped Katie's baby in it.
confident they're out there. Blacks. Seen their smoke. Could be anyone. Mister! Yes. What did you find? They've camped here. How many? Three, I'd say. Is that the best you can do? He's a shepherd. Ask your own friend. There's a better not be a wild goose chase, that's all. What makes you so sure Skelton's with them? Ah, oh, Sam. There'll be no medals this day. Just a scout. <laughs> See you. I said it was food for Katie. She's had a baby. I'll try to find something. Eat the food. I can't stay now. I'll go. Tonight. I won't be any more trouble to you. Jack, you can't move. You couldn't have a doctor. Take me. I can't go back, Miss Yazzie. Not to the gang, not to the island. Oh. It's now about a month. I know. I'll try to eat. I'll come back later. Dolly! said it weren't. Seven years. Tommy. Up north. Along the coast. Leave your powder. I'll tell you when to fire. Where's Luke?
Anything bloody look at you, give us. Can you see anything? Done for it. I know it. Hold your water. Evans. You said he'd be here. I was wrong. Going soon. When it's dark. Such a long way. Hi. Timo. Near China, they say. Three or four hundred miles. The blacks will look after me. They know I'm their friend. Stay tonight, Jack. Tomorrow you'll be stronger. I'm gonna stand on my own two feet. I'll be all right. You go now, missus. Before the master gets back. I don't want you getting in, in, into trouble. I'll, I'll be all right when I get to the bush. I can. I can. Ow! Use your gun, mister. Shoot me. He's ill, father. He wants to go home. Please, mister. What do I do? He wants to go home. He can endure no more. He should go. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Yeah. Take them. That's your way. February the 11th, 1833. My choice resided not so much between life and death, but in the nature of death. Whether he should die chained without hope in the grim confines of Norfolk Island, or in the dignity of liberty, knowing at least he tried, tried unto death, to make a promise true. Dear Joan, this is to say I'm thinking of you and shall never cease to wait for you to come home again. Yes, Joan, I said I'd wait if it was forever. <laughs>